All right, guys, in this video, what I want to do is take a look at the different types of mobile applications that exist and do a little bit of comparison from the standpoint of a company looking to build or hire someone to build a mobile application. And this is a huge choice. It could make or break a company's success in the mobile app world. So we're going to compare web apps, native and hybrid apps, and we'll talk about the differences. We'll also look at the advantages and disadvantages of each. So let's go ahead and get started. This video is sponsored by Zeeker. If you'd like to complete more online tutorials and spend less time struggling with the difficult parts, head over to Zeeker and schedule a live one-on-one -on -one video call with a web development expert of your choice to get personal guidance and feedback. Sign up at Zeeker.com or click on the link in the description below. So there's basically three main types of mobile apps. There is a gray area, which I'll get into later, but for the most part, we have web apps, native apps, and hybrid apps. So let's dig in and let's take a look at what each of these actually are and take a look at some advantages and disadvantages of each. All right, so first one we'll look at is web apps. Okay, so web applications or, or mobile websites are built using standard web technologies, including HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. They run inside of a standard web browser like Chrome, Firefox, Safari. They're built and hosted just like any web application or website on the internet. The only real difference is that they're built to look good and to function well on mobile devices. This usually means that they're responsive and they're designed with a mobile first approach, meaning they start with focusing on the, the mobile view, but also make it work for desktops as well. All right, so let's take a look at some of the advantages of building a web app. So first, they're built using just regular web standards like HTML, CSS, JavaScript. You don't need to learn any difficult languages like Java or Swift or anything like that. Any web developer can build a simple web app or mobile website. Um, this also makes the app very easy to host and maintain. Simply upload to a hosting account with a domain. Um, if you're building like a like a standard uh, like a static html site you can ho host it absolutely anywhere all right another advantage is that uh, you can use any type of web technology and stack that you want if you want a laravel app or a python node.js whatever you want you don't have you don't have limitations in that aspect okay web apps are also by far the cheapest option like by far if you're not a web developer yourself hiring a web developer is much much cheaper than hiring for instance a swift programmer all right so price also goes into this uh, this next advantage which is that you can build one application for all platforms so ios android um, the four people that use blackberry and windows phones your app is going to run on any device that ha as long as it can run a browser all right, even an old school flip phone, this your your web app will run on as long as it has some kind of browser. It may not look right, but it will run it. Um, this is obviously much, much cheaper than both native and hybrid apps. Um, not only that, but your app is accessible to um, to desktop PCs and laptops as well, uh, as long as they have an Internet connection. All right, so let's talk about some of the disadvantages, and there is quite a bit to building a web app. So the biggest is that it needs a browser to run. This means that the user has to actually go into um, Safari on their iOS device or Chrome or whatever browser they use on their phone, type in the URL of the app, and this is a really, really poor user experience. Web apps are also usually much slower than native apps. Um, the reason being native apps are created for that specific device. They're optimized to run on that device as well as possible. All right, web apps are less interactive and less intuitive. Buttons don't have the same type of, uh, of interacting effect as a native app does. All right, like I said, you need, uh, you need to run the app in the browser, so you don't have an icon on your mobile desktop uh, as you would if you downloaded it from the app store, which also you know, doesn't give a very well user experience. Um, web apps also cannot be submitted to app stores, so you would need to turn uh, you need to turn your web app into some kind of hybrid app, and I'll go over that later. All right, if you wanted to put it in a web store. So most web apps cannot interact with device utilities. Um, there's no API, for instance, for the camera, for geolocation, or any of those features, uh, for the most part. 
All right, so let's talk about native apps. So a native application is the most common type of mobile app. When you search the app store and you download an application, it's most likely native. However, hybrid apps are growing in popularity and these can be added to the app store as well. But a native app is built for a specific platform. An Android app is coded in Java and it uses the SDK for that platform. Same thing with iOS, it's written in Swift uh, or sometimes Objective-C and it's written for the iOS platform. All right, with that said, native apps are very, very fast, and that's because, like I just said, they're built for that specific platform. Okay, Android, iOS, Windows phones, they all have their own, the own, their own language and SDKs. Native apps are also very easily distributed into app stores, whether it's the Apple Store, Google Play, or the Windows Store, native apps can be approved very easily. Native apps are also much more interactive and intuitive, things run much smoother as far as user input and output. They can also easily interact with almost any feature of the phone, whether it's the camera, location, uh, storage, the compass. There's an extensive API to work with just about any part of the hardware and native applications can really get into that and do some really awesome things. All right, so for the disadvantages, there are actually some pretty hardcore cons about building a native app. So one, they're built for a single platform. You build an Android app in Java and it's only gonna work on Android. Your Swift app, however, will only work on iPhone. If you want an app for both Android and iPhone, uh, or even Windows or Blackberry, you're gonna, you're gonna go bankrupt because you're gonna have to treat all of these as separate projects that are really expensive. All right, now these are also much harder languages to learn. Uh, you know, Swift, Java, much, much harder than learning JavaScript and HTML and CSS or even some back-end web stacks. Um, Swift and Java are just much more intricate. Hiring developers for these languages are very, very expensive rel relative to your standard web developer. Um, in addition to being single platform, harder to create, way more expensive, they're also harder to maintain. All right, so these are some serious disadvantages when it comes to building native mobile apps. If you're a startup, some of these things make it impossible for native to be your, your first choice. All right, so that brings us to the final choice, which is a hybrid mobile app. And a hybrid app is basically a combination of a web app and a native app. It does use HTML and CSS and JavaScript, but it also runs inside of some kind of container or web view, usually through a framework. So on the surface, it can actually be perceived as a native app. All right, so there's actually quite a few advantages to building a hybrid app. So they're built on web technology such as HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So this makes them much easier to build. Of course, certain frameworks have, um, you know, you can use Angular with Ionic and you can use React Native. But uh, under that, you have just basically JavaScript. Okay, they're also much, much cheaper than a native app. If you're going to hire developers, a web developer is way more cheaper than uh, a Swift developer. Another huge advantage is that you only need a single app for all platforms. If you use a technology like Cordova PhoneGap, which is like a wrapper for hybrid apps, they can actually, you can build this, you can use that one code base, that same application for iOS and Android, and I believe even Windows Phone and Blackberry. So you essentially have one code base to maintain as opposed to multiple apps. All right, of course, since hybrid apps run in a web view, there's no browser needed like with a web app, okay? They can be published on all of the app stores. Uh, there's really not too many ways for a customer to, to even figure out that it is a hybrid app and not a native app. All right, they can be installed the exact same way. Hybrid apps also have access to device internal APIs and they can access features like the camera, geolocation, the storage, things like that. A lot of this does depend on the actual framework you use because there are quite a few, but most of them do allow you to do stuff like that. Hybrid app development is also much, much faster than native app development because you do have that single code base and uh, you do have you know, easier languages to work with. So instead of you know, having a, a, an Android app, an iOS app, a Windows app, and maintaining all three of those separately, you have one code base and that, that really, really speeds things up. All right, so what about disadvantages of hybrid apps? 
Well, they usually are slower than native apps. Like I said, native apps are specifically built for certain platforms in a certain language. Hybrid apps do have sort of a middleman to go through. They may feel a little bit more clunkier, but that's getting better as these mobile frameworks are progressing. All right, now hybrid apps, while much cheaper than native apps, they are more expensive than you know standard web apps because you have that wrapper framework to work with and maintain. But there's very, very few situations where I would choose a web app over a hybrid app unless desktops were a really big focus, okay? Unless it wasn't truly a, a mobile app. Now, they can also be a, a bit less interactive with button presses and things like that. But uh, as I said, you know, these things are getting better all the time. Hybrid frameworks are, are relatively new technologies and they're getting better every day. Now there is an exception or even a fourth type of mobile app and that is apps built with platforms that use web technologies but convert the app into native components rather than just outputting into a web view. Okay, that's what frameworks like React Native and Xamarin do. I don't have much experience with Xamarin, but from what I've heard and, and seen, it does kind of the same thing. Um, unlike Ionic and PhoneGap, where these are essentially just web apps wrapped inside of a web view. But in my opinion, React Native, uh, a React Native app is very, very close to a real native app in terms of performance. So these, these technologies are getting better every day. So what's the conclusion? I would say that unless you have an unlimited source of funds and highly, highly skilled programmers in Java and Swift, I, th I do think hybrid or um, you know web-based native is the way to go. So um, here's some of the frameworks that can be used to create mobile apps with only knowledge of, of you know technologies like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, JSX. Um, now React Native and, and Xamarin are almost in a league of their own because they do in fact create native apps and any web developer that knows React can actually use React Native. Um, you also have other hybrid frameworks like Ionic, which is really nice, um, Mobile Angular UI, which I haven't looked into very much. Cordova and PhoneGap are basically wrappers that allow you to turn literally any web app into a hybrid app. And then you have other frameworks like Senka Touch and Framework 7, which I don't have much experience with. But overall, m my final conclusion would be that native is going to be, it's going to perform the best, but the practicality, the pricing uh, um, of, of a hybrid app over, overrules that big time, at least in my opinion. Okay, you may think different, but that's just what I think. All right, so if you guys want to learn more about creating um, mobile apps from web technologies, I do have uh, a pretty big course with Eduonics where we have five projects in PhoneGap, jQuery Mobile, which is basically just a UI library, uh, React Native, Ionic, and Meteor. Okay, so you may want to check that out. There's, the link is there. It's also in the description. Hopefully you guys liked this video and hopefully it shed a little bit of light on the differences between the different types of mobile apps. So that's it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.